One important feature that's been added starting with OCOC Pro 5 is the ability to add to model multipole structures. Previous versions of OCOC were pretty much designed for doing distribution poles uh, only, uh, single poles. So let's take a look at what's involved in making a multipole age frame type structure. I'm going to do a new pole. I'm going to tell it's a multipole structure. And you see what it did is it made a base structure and attached a load case to it. Now if I select the base structure and I say I want to add a wood pole to it. I'm going to do, let's see what I got, 64, that's fine. And it, put, it's, it puts it straight in the middle. Okay, now I'm going to add a second pole and I'm going to place this pole, if we go under the multipole attribute group and say I want it to be 10 feet offset. And then I can take that same pole and copy it once again and it'll implicitly make it 10 feet offset in the other direction. Now, if I select the structure group again and say I want to add a cross arm, what it does is it adds a cross arm not to the pole but to the group. So assuming it's physically possible it would share the load, it would act as bridging. So let's go under our dimensions and we know that this is plus or minus 10 feet so let's call it a 30 foot arm and we'll give it a little bit beefier dimensions so it's a it's a seven by four and maybe we want to move it up a little bit let's call it at the 43 foot mark like that and there's our shared bridge arm so that by definition is connected to all of those poles. Now if it if I had it rigged in such a way that it only touched two of them it would have only be attached to them and it would only share the load of the two of them. If I want to do underbuild I do underbuild exactly the same way I always did. So rather than pecking the structure I pick the pole and so let's take this right hand leg and say I want to add let's for the sake of argument say a street light to it and so now that street light gets added to the right hand leg and off we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our loads on there. I'm going to pull up my user catalog just to make things a little bit easier. And I will take and I'll put this pre built insulator and two spans on here. Now, typically, because these are meant to go on smaller cross arms, you'll see that the units. Uh, in the in the, the in the offset value, so the distance from the centroid of the cross arm that that insulator is placed is 20 inches. In our case, it's not terribly useful to tr try to have to figure out exactly what how many inches it's going to be to be in our case. Let's call it 14 feet because it's plus plus or minus 15. So if I just say minus 14 and then I give it the foot mark, which we saw in the previous video, it's going to say okay minus 14 feet make a copy of it. And this one's going to be at 14 feet. And now we've gone ahead and, and placed our load uh, there. So now you'll notice that the output of this system is still the loading on one leg of this system. And by default it it basically picks the active leg and tells you that that's the one it's outputting. But if I go into the structure and I set my reporting mode to in fact worst leg, what it will automatically do is calculate through and now it has found out which leg is receiving the most load and it's gone ahead and auto highlighted that one and, um, and showed it over here. Uh, what else can we do? That's pretty much all you need to know for doing a simple multipole structure. Now in the next video what we're going to do is show how you apply bracing, cross braces, um, tension only objects and that sort of thing. But as a general proposition the actual modeling of the legs and the loads on the cross bridges, the cross arm bridges is as we've demonstrated here.